Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Profiles from the Titanic. Glad to be with you once again. We've got another good show for you today. Another great profile from the Titanic. But before we begin, I just wanted to, to think about, you know, how even here we are just about 109 years after the tragedy. And if you watch on a lot of the cable channels, even now, there are still new Titanic documentaries coming out all the time. I just saw a brand new one back in, uh, in January that had been produced. And so the story, again, it just will not die. It will not go away. So it's pretty cool, if you do have an interest in Titanic, that there are a bunch of documentaries out there. I mean, I documented at least about 20 that I saw last year, and there are many more. So if you're interested in the story, there is plenty to whet your appetite just in the documentaries, much less the books, right? And why are we interested? Well, that's what this series is all about, profiling the people who were on board. It's, it's my conjecture that that's the real interest, the human interest story of these people who were on board, and of course, 1,500 of them lost their lives. Now today, we have another one. We're going to the first class passenger list once again, and today, in the profile from the Titanic, another millionaire playboy, this time, in the profile from the Titanic, Benjamin Guggenheim. Hope you enjoy. Benjamin Guggenheim was born in 1865 into a family heavily involved in the mining industry. He went into the family business early on and by age 20 was sent to Colorado to oversee family interests there. He began a smelting operation, which was quite profitable, and due to his interest in silver, he was called the Silver Prince. By 1894, he married, and between 1895 and 1903, the couple had three daughters. But family business called him away often, and he even had an apartment in Paris. Apparently, the time away did not bode well for his marriage. By the time he boarded the Titanic in April of 1912, he was accompanied by his mistress. He boarded the ship at Cherbourg, originally slated to sail on the Lusitania, but since that ship was undergoing repairs, he changed his plans and bought passage on White Star Line's newest RMS Titanic. He and his valet stayed in first class along with his mistress and her maid. Guggenheim's chauffeur also traveled with the company and stayed in a second class cabin. On the night of the 14th, the Titanic struck the fateful iceberg. Guggenheim and his valet were asleep until after midnight, only awakened by his mistress and her maid. With the help of the steward, Guggenheim got dressed and the party went up to the boat deck. His mistress and her maid were put into one of the lifeboats. Guggenheim and his valet then helped others into the lifeboats for the next couple of hours. Realizing the extent of the damage and the seriousness of the situation as the night wore on, he and his valet returned to their cabin and dressed in their finest evening wear. Guggenheim was reportedly heard to say that they were prepared to go down like gentlemen. He sent a message through a steward to his wife saying that he had done his best to do his duty. The two men then spent the last moment seated on deck chairs by the grand staircase. Benjamin Guggenheim, his valet Victor Giglio, and his chauffeur René Pernot died in the sinking. Their bodies were never found. The family blamed the shipping company for not taking proper precautions, and in his last will, Guggenheim left one-third of his estate to his wife and the other two-thirds to his three daughters. Thanks for watching Profiles from the Titanic.